And we're back for game number two in Whistler versus Marwin. The map is going to be match point. As you can see here, once again, we are back on this two-player map that has had some uh, pretty legendary games in the past. Hopefully it will provide us with some in the TLS 2 as well. And uh, I don't think there's anything interesting to say. So let's just go. Let's go. Alright, here we are in game number two, at the bottom left. As the blue Zerg, we have SJ Whistler. At the top right, as the orange Terran, we have IFU Marwin. Alright, the map once again is match point, two player map. And, uh, man, awesome game last game. I'm not sure if we'll see something similar this game. Um, I mean, the natural to natural distance is actually closer on this map, so could potentially. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure if 2H Muta is is quite as good on, on match point. I mean, I'm trying to think about this. To be honest, it's been uh, it's been quite a while since you know this map was actively used. Um, so uh, hmm. I'm not too sure what the standard is. In fact, I guess we shall see. But of course, you know it is a pretty well known map. So I'm sure both these players have played some games on this, or at least are familiar with what it looks like. Uh, one thing, of course, you have to note is that unlike a normal four player map, you can't just take a uh, an easy third bait. But where, where are you going? Is that just a 9 drone? Gotta check for, is he just checking for proxy racks? That's interesting. Okay. I think he's just checking for proxies. He's being really careful here. Uh, he could be doing some kind of crazy proxy match. I think it's unlikely. Uh, okay, what was I saying? Oh yes, you can't take an easy third gas here as the Zerg. Um, at the top left is the normal third base here. But, you know, there's like two entrances here. There's a narrow ramp here and a narrow ramp here. Um, both of which the Terran has fairly easy access to. Um, sometimes you can actually take this base at the 6 o'clock, even though it's far away by ground. It's fairly close by air, so if you go for Mutas, you can still help defend it. And it's also got just this one entrance here that you can defend with Lurkers. Even though it's not a ramp, it's still fairly narrow. So that's, uh, that's a possibility as well. Uh, so we'll see, see what Whistler goes for. In the meantime, it's like a random drone guy. was just for scouting for some harassment here, so Whistler not taking any chances in case Marwin goes for the cheese. Uh, well, he's also going for 12 patch. And Marwin's gonna scout that as well. It's looking just like Marwin's going for a 1 Rex expand. It doesn't seem like he's trying any kind of uh, early aggression. So. Is this CV actually gonna continue chasing the drone? I thought he would just come over here and make a command center. I think he's still gonna do that when he's born to minerals. He's gonna ignore the drone. Oh, doing some quick players doing some micro here. The SCV seems to be getting the better of it. And yeah, as I said, just gonna pull that back, make the command center straight away. And it looks like we have a gas taken already from Whistler, so it looks like he is actually gonna go for 2 hatch again. Uh, perhaps just confident in his 2 hatch uh, uh, muta build. Uh, I, I do remember, like, um, I have seen Whistler playing practice games against Eonzerg a lot on Eonzerg's stream. So I don't know if this was, in fact, perhaps inspired by, by Eonzerg himself. Uh, maybe, you know, these guys, they're both high-level Zergs, and maybe they just talk some strategy here. Eon Zerg, by the way, of course, uh, was our fourth place finisher in the last season of TLS, so he's been seeded directly into the round of 16 groups uh, for this season. So, uh, so he's a little bit of downtime, maybe gonna help his fellow Zergs out. Oh, drone kill! Boom! Headshot. That's what's up. Oh man, that is, that is a little bit embarrassing. <coughs> oh, wait, what is this? Oh my god, the first Marine's here, what?! <laughs> the first Marine came out! Unfortunately for him, there's two Lings there, so he's probably going to die. And that SCV is dead as well. Alright, Marwin, or, yeah, Marwin getting a little bit over-eager with that Marine. He could have potentially killed a second drone, in fact, if Whistler hadn't made it into an extractor very smartly. Uh, and he is at least going to distract these couple of Lings, drawing them all the way to the top left. Meanwhile, uh, it is just going to be a standard 2 Racks Academy follow-up from this 1 Racks Expand. Nice little semi-wall here with the depot uh, and the bunker here kind of stopping a run by along the right side. 
It's not a full wall, but it doesn't really matter. You can actually full wall on this map and then later line out this mineral patch. It is a 16 mineral patch, so it just helps to narrow the gap a little bit, and then later on if you want to move units out, you just mine it out. Um, it's actually quite useful if your if your protoal is playing PvZ and you just you can do a full wall and then line this out later on uh, when you're doing a forge fast expand. And uh, Marmonat is actually going to see uh, eight zerglings here, it looks like. So that's uh, quite a few zerglings, but no real chance for him to to actually do anything here. He will block the scout though, but I think you know having seen that early gas, Marwin probably expects it to be too much muta anyway. And we do see, in fact, it is 2-edge Muta. Um, so basically on this map, there is this nice little cliff. There's actually this little high ground area in between Marwyn's main and his natural is really nice for Muta to harass. So obviously, you can harass the back of the minerals here at the natural, but it also gives you kind of like a springboard to harass the production facilities. And that's that's why this building placement, by the way, is really nice by Marwyn. He didn't just like build them here, kind of out in the open uh, between the bases. He, he stuck them right along the edge of the map. And this is one of the, one of the things that uh, kind of, we saw a lot of players start doing as the map got more figured out in the pro scene, is that building the buildings right along the edge here, and also even once you've uh, expanded and taken your third, building buildings between your natural and your third, kind of along the side, is actually very popular, because dropping into the main is so easy on this map, and, uh, and also, as I said, you know, Mutacrass here from the cliff gives you like a nice springboard to start picking off some units here, so, um, so building them right on the edge is kind of the way to go uh, for Pearls and Terran. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so it looks like a good number of links out. Pretty common again when you go for 2 edge muta to make a good number of links and, uh, and try and snipe some marines if you can. Oh, it looks like Marmot is moving out though. He's not scared. He's not intimidated by those zerglings. Shouldn't be either. He's got a good number of marines. And meanwhile, uh, we do see the drone at the top left. So you know, even though I said it's a little bit more vulnerable than on, on some maps, um, it, you know, since Whistler is going for an aggressive 2 edge muta strategy. Um, that, that'll be fine anyway, because he's basically going to be keeping putting a lot of pressure on the Terran, making sure you can't attack that third base anyway, so it doesn't really matter that you can't defend it at one ramp. Um, the Terran's not going to be attacking it. Well, ideally, the plan is that the Terran won't attack it anyway. Only two guys on this gas, by the way. I'm not sure if that's intentional. He doesn't have enough gas anyway. So that might be. And the Moonies are now in. to stop that second turn from finishing, although it's like that should be finished up in a second. Yep. And uh, I think Marwin will be okay. Um, a lot of Terrans will just float a building back here actually to help out because this is just such an obnoxious position. You can see he's even building turrets kind of right on the edge. Um, but Marwin's turret position, or turret timing is pretty decent here, so I think he'll be okay. Looks like he's going for this turret. He's going to take a lot of damage though. Oh man, taking so much damage! He's not even fully clumped his mutas right now. Whistler really showing a bit of lackluster muta micro right here. Oh, well, I guess it was sufficient in the last game. Uh, a little scan up there to see on the high ground as well. Again, this is a really annoying position. And uh, Whistler taking his third base, not getting a, uh, an air, uh, any any muta upgrades. Didn't think so. Should be getting that hydrogen fairly soon. We actually saw him put it down really early. Oh, there it is already. Sorry, I, I completely missed it. Looking in the main, so we do have the den and the Evo chamber already. Going to be getting plus one carapace for this round uh, from that. And it looks like uh, Whistler's actually found a slight vulnerability here, a small opening at the back of the mineral line, but the turrets are a little bit too far to the left. Um, so he's gonna, uh, he's gonna pick off some ESCVs. I mean, th they're not too far to the left. This is still this is good positioning by Marwin. It's just that. The way the map is structured uh, allows the mutas to swing around here along the top and, uh, and find some space. Um, so that's quite nice. And there's a carapace, as I said. Third base done as well now, so he can get his third gas when he wants. Probably gonna get. I'm uh, not gonna get that too, too, too soon. He's already mining from two gas and doesn't have the highest drone count, of course, since he went for two edge muta. So I think delaying that third gas a little bit is uh, is the way to go. And we do have a factory now. For Mr. Marwin. Gonna be taking up, getting that plus one attack. When that finishes, he's gonna have a pretty hard time dealing with uh, the Marines. And it looks like Marwin again is moving across the map. One spotting link does see the Marines coming, so uh, Whistler should be making Sunkins. Probably needs at least two or three Sunkins, I think, depending on how confident. Oh my god, what? No, oh god! Oh god, that was bad. That was not good. Okay, now he needs like four Sunkins. I think he actually does need four Sunkins. Oh my god, four Sunkins. Go. Go Sunkins. Sunkins, even the Lings are dying. The Lings are dying. Whistler! Whistler! You need more Sunkins, bro! Two Sunkins, it's not enough! I don't know, he's got a few Lings and Mutas left. I still don't think it's enough. Ooh, he's got a few Lings here though! Oh no, Marwin! Marwin's not paying attention! Oh god, Marwin! Oh my god, what just happened? What? Okay, I thought Whistler was in a lot of trouble. 
And then Marwin did the good old. Here, let me just aim with my Marines and not look at them for a second. Oh my god, they're all dead. Well, that was bad. <laughs> that was not ideal. That was, in fact, less than good. So now we're uh, at even supply, and Marwin has lost a lot of Marines. He's only got one medic left as well. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's okay. It's okay. You know, no bigs, no bigs. Still got a decent economy. He's taken up. He's getting a size facility. Uh, I guess he'll just have to play a little bit more, more carefully now. Um, and, I don't know, he's going to try and take his third base. There's some lurkers moving across. Could deny it. Where the lurkers going to go? Looks like they're going to head up to this high ground platform. Nope. Going to the, oh, he can't decide which way he wants to go. All right, he's going out. Do you have a Queen's Nest yet? Not yet. Ooh, a lot of Lurkers, though. Look at them Lurkers go. And what do we got here? Yeah, we've been looking pretty normal. Only three barracks still, so just fourth one just now being added on. So the Bio Force isn't able to be replenished that quickly. I mean, it's actually... Marvin's really on top of the back, but that's a, that's a really good number of Marines, even though he lost all that all these units earlier and, you know, only had three barracks. He's really been keeping on top of the production there. It's, it's quite, quite really difficult to... Uh, you know, playing a Bio-style TBZ is probably one of the hardest standard strategies to do in this game. Um, because, you know, first of all, the control is very hard with the Medic Marine against Lurkers, and then also the production cycle is so short on the Marines that you really got to be on top of macroing from all the barracks uh, if you want to keep your money low. It's actually really, really hard to pull off uh, mechanically. <clears throat> bum, bum, bum. Alright, so let's see what in here. To see nothing too interesting. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure he knew there was a base there. And uh, there is the hive on the way. It's like plus two carapace started as well for Mr. Zerg. And uh, he's got a few units here on the high ground. This high ground pod outside the mineral only third is generally uh, kind of the point of contention in a lot of games here. It's very important to control this for both players. But uh, oh my god, Whistler's not paying attention. This time, Whistler's the one who's gonna get massacred. Oh my god, and he even unburrows. Wow, losing four lurkers there for free, basically. He does somehow save the other two lurkers, but Whistler can, or sorry, Marvin can even come around the other side and just take out these two. Dang, both players making some blunders here. And now Marwin is moving out with a pretty scary force. This vessel that was leading the charge, if there was some, some scourge here, that'd be really useful for, uh, for Whistler, and the problem for Whistler also is that these tanks can actually siege on the low ground and siege down the natural expansion. This is a really obnoxious, obnoxious position on this map here. He doesn't need to go on the high ground, although it looks like he's making a bit of a mistake sieging his tank in the sunken range. But uh, I don't know why Mars actually not abusing this position here to just put the siege tanks here and attack this hatchery. Because that is just so, so, so good. Meanwhile, he's getting a third base. He's got some more reinforcements as well. I like how Whistler's actually left these units here, so if Marwin doesn't pay attention and just kind of uh, rallies in reinforcements, they will get taken down by those lurkers. Unfortunately for Whistler though, I don't know if it even matters, and here we go! He's moving in, he's gonna just take down the last couple of lurkers! Whistler is just down to a couple of sunk, he's got more lurkers in the back! But they're not gonna have a really good position here, the tanks on the low ground supporting the marines, the queens has thighs, that's not that important. But, uh, but man, how's he gonna deal with this? Oh man, some more lurkers in the middle of the map, it looks like. Gonna get taken down by Marwin. Nice little split there. And he is gonna get these four lurkers as well. Looks like a lot of the Marines in the front, though, did get taken down by the rest of the lurkers in the back. The Sea Shanks still holding position, sieging down the natural expansion. Have these lurkers got any kills? Not yet. Marwin actually just uh, keeping the rest of the units back. His third base is almost done here. Whistler in a lot of trouble here. I think he's gonna lose this natural expansion. I don't really see how he's gonna hold this. Looks like he's gonna try, though. He's moving the lurkers up. He's gonna try and shoot them from the high ground here. Can he do it? Oh my god, the lurkers are bugging out though he didn't he's tried to get them as close as he could but oh lurker flank he's flanking the sea shanks the tanks are all getting taken down i don't know where these lurkers came from but somehow he's taken down all but one of the sea shanks marwin's force that was looking so scary is reduced to three marines and a tank and a few medics i don't know how that happened but now marwin is moving out with the rest of his force it looks like those two lurkers were actually brought back to help with this flank attack i guess that's where those lurkers came from he brought the ones that were uh, stopping the reinforcements but that's obviously going to allow Marwin to send the rest of his army across the map. The floodgates are now open, and now this lurker flank is about to get flanked here. Multiple flanks everywhere. And here we go. Oh, there's even an irradiate. He's not going to use his units, but here we go. Oh, man, the units on the top have been killed, though, so Whistler retakes control of this high ground. He's going to not let this lurker kill all of his links. All right, there we go. But again, Marwin just going to be able to abuse this low ground position here. The hatchery is very low on health. Whistler, or sorry, Marwin really should just siege up here, not try and push the high ground, and just siege it down from the low ground. There we go. There is the siege up. The lurkers 
freaking out. They don't know how to deal with this. This is a really difficult position uh, for any... Basically, for both Zergs and Pertals, it's really hard to deal with against Terran. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is not working out for him. That hatchery is about to fall. Although a few drones are, uh, are tanking some shots. And... Oh my god, what?! What? What just happened?! The hatchery's got one shot left on it! Where did, where did that even come from?! Oh my god! He had six guardians! Why does he suddenly have six guardians?! <laughs> Whistler somehow just magicked six guardians out and has annihilated- Oh, he's such a trap! He's got trapped by lurkers! Whistler is amazing! I don't know how this is happening! The random ass guardians save the day! And did he just irradiate a marine? I think he just irradiated a marine right there. Marwin is just freaking out. He can't believe what's going on right now. He is so shocked that he irradiated a marine in the middle of his marines. What the hell? <laughs> this is so good. This hatchery is dead, but it's not dead. It's dead, but it's alive. However, Marwin does have a fourth base though. Somehow while all this has been going on, Marwin's taking a fourth. We did see in his earlier game against uh, against uh, Beyond that he really likes to just expand aggressively. So he's actually got an insane economy right now. He's actually got more bases than the Zerg. He's on four bases against three base Zerg. So even though he just got pwned by those Guardians, if he can just macro up again, he will be able to outlast Whistler. But Whistler is moving across the map with his Guardians on Lurker Ling. Is Marwin going to be able to defend these bases? Alright. Here we go, where's he gonna go? Is he gonna go for the third? I don't know if Whistler's even aware of this base in the bottom right, but look at this! Look at this, we have a drop in the main base! We do have a drop in the main base! Whistler, he actually doesn't have that many units after that, uh, after cleaning up that attack. Oh, he's got a lot of Guardians though, he needs these Guardians to move over here ASAPly. But the Marines are running out here, the Guardians are gonna get caught in open field! If the Guardians are caught in the middle like this, it's gonna be terrible! The Lurkers need to borrow, they need to support the Guardians! Oh my god, the Guardians could die here, but it looks like, is there enough Zerg? To stop the Marines, it's gonna be close, but it looks like Marwin is forced back and Marwin is not paying attention to his drop. Marwin is struggling with the multitask now. His money is getting high, his control is wavering. Whistler is pushing through here. Remember, Whistler is also up 1 0 in the series. This is a must win game for Marwin. It's looking like the pressure is getting to him a little bit here, but it looks like the drop is moving in. There's a few links there, but with good micro, he should be able to take it. Uh, yes, he's still got four Marines remaining. They are two unupgraded Marines. They can do a lot of damage. This base is probably going to have to be lifted off, but Marwin does have the advantage of this hidden base here at the bottom right. I am almost 100% certain that Whistler does not know about that base. It looks like in the drop in the main isn't really going to do too much damage. Only three Marines there and the Lurker there as well. But, uh, this commander is not even being lifted. And there we go. Marwin's moving in again. Running in a line, though. Lurker doing maximum damage. But it looks like... Marwin is going to be able to actually uh, leave this command center in place, although the Guardian is going to try to abuse this high ground position as a lurker there as well. So, uh, taking really good use of the terrain here. Whistler is, but unfortunately, it's kind of just run out of units. Uh, and, uh, and even though he's being super cost efficient there, I think eventually those are just going to get taken down. Whistler actually just has a. Oh my. What the? Did he just bring like 10 lurkers back to kill 3 marines? What on earth is going on here? Whistler. It's a little bit overkill, man. Just a little bit. This Guardian, by the way. Oh my god, it's got 20 kills! Badass Guardian. Look at this guy. 20 kill Guardian. That is awesome. I mean, now with an Ultras Cavern, Whistler has decided he actually has enough money to go Ultras, even though he's still just on three gas, three bases. Finally taking his Minar only. This hatchery is so, is, is so easy to get sniped at any point. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't make it into a lair. I guess he just doesn't want to waste the gas. It's a pretty common trick from Zerg. If their hatchery is very badly damaged, making it into a lair, it gets uh, additional HP. I think it gets additional armor as well when that lair finishes. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, anyway, here we go. Marwin moving out once again. It's a lot of lurkers, but not much supporting them. They really need some link support or something. Uh, oh, there's the rest of the units coming out from the main. And, uh, man, he's still got so many units in the main. Here we go. You can see a big engagement here on the high ground pod. This is what I'm talking about. All the big battles on match point happen on these pods. Here we go! The lurkers moving in! Oh, man, a lot of lurkers borrowed too far away, though. Not the best surround with the lurkers, but it is enough to at least push the medic marine back. The vessels, though, uh, the vessel kind of getting a little bit high. There are four vessels now. This was scourged a couple of earlier. But uh, they're gonna start raiding down all his lurkers. Really gotta start scourging them more. Um, What's actually up at 2k minerals? I'm not sure why. Marwin, despite having more bases, is actually uh, keeping his money down a little bit lower, although he's mined out his main. 
in the meantime. Where did the Ultra Cabin go? There we go. Ultra's Carapace on the way. But again, Whistler is still only on free gas, so he really cannot afford Defilers, Lurkers, and Ultras. He's not going to have very many of them. Oh my god, what is this? Random Overlord is getting suicided here. Is this like a Miss Rally or something? I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, this is going to get taken down. In the meantime, Marwin, he's moving out with a big attack here. He's actually just completely ran around the high ground. He decided to go on the low ground route instead. Wizard looked like he wanted to do a Lurker Egg block here to buy himself some time. Didn't quite get it off. Both the fires, or rather, one fire and the Lurker are radiated. The fire doesn't get the storm off. Oh my god, what is the Wizard doing? The rest of his army's out of position. He needs to bring it down now. The, the Terran army's just gonna walk into his natural. Where's the Zerg army? It needs to come down. The natural expansion is gonna get taken down this time, finally, after so long. And there's so many Marines here. Three, two Marines, ridiculously well upgraded. Here we go. This could be the last engagement. Can Whistler all here. There are the Dark Swarms, but everything is irradiated. There's even a racer on that vessel. Oh man, the Dark Swarm goes down, but the Marines are just going to run past. They're taking down the Defiler Mound. No uh, plague for you, and the Ultras pop, but they're going to get taken out straight away as well. They didn't have their Carapace bonus just yet. The Carapace bonus just now finishes as well as the plus 3 armor. So this is Ultras. Did you guys see that? It suddenly went from plus 2 armor to plus 5, but the Marines are still going to run into the main base here. And the natural is dead. I really think Whistler is on his last legs right now. He's down to 69 supply against 154. These ultras are his last hope. But uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. He might be able to clean up the small marine group, though. Looks like uh, Whistler is going to be able to clean this up. Everything getting irradiated with just an, un uh, an unstoppable uh, vessel count here. He's not scourging them down. Whistler, or sorry, Marwan even is just expanding to the 6 o'clock. He doesn't care. And all these vulnerable vessels are just going to fly away home safe. And Marwin, what the? Ladies and gentlemen, we have battle cruisers. Oh my god. That's what's up. He's gonna get Mato too. What a boss. What a badass. He's gonna kill the Overlord. He's not even gonna hide it. Like, yeah, I got battle cruisers. Sub. Oh man, Marwin. The funny thing is, that's actually a legitimate response to Ultralisk, is to get BCs. Because obviously there's no, like, you know. Uh, persistent anti-air. They can get Scourge, but Battle Cruisers are actually they're pretty good against Scourge because they one-shot them. And, uh, and they're really good against Ultras because they have uh, pretty high damage per shot, so they kind of, uh, you know, not worry too much about the armor. BCs, man! BCs! That's what's up! Marwin! He knows what's up. He's at 163 supply against 85. Um, Whistler, he just now retaking his natural one. Here we go. There's your Radiate. He should have Radiated the Filer as well. And finally some vessels getting plagued. Where's the Dark Swarm though? No Dark Swarm. Oh, he doesn't have energy. He's only at 85 energy. And it's going to get radiated down. That's probably going to be it. Maybe. Not yet. Not yet. Few Marines moving down to secure the 6 o'clock. I guess Marwin's just going to wait until he has like more BCs. He wants to win the game with Battle Cruisers. He doesn't want to win with Lame units like Medics and Marines. No, that's not cool. BCs where it's at. Oh, one's going to get Scourged. Ha! You see what I'm talking about? That was like 8 Scourge here. And he killed two of them with a BC, and then it, it wasn't even enough damage to finish it off. Damn, these things are good. Where are the rest of that? Oh, there we go. Once you get like four BCs, they can kill Scourge so fast, it's actually pretty silly. Lol. Oh! Yamato the drone! Yamato the drone! Dude. Dude, are you Forella? Oh, man. I don't, even, I don't even know if Whistler caught that. I was lucky to catch that. Oh man, Marwin, Marwin, was that really necessary? GG from Whistler, and Marwin evens up the score. We're going to a deciding game three. Aw yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's what I like to see. Deciding game on Fighting Spirit. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. All right, gonna go to a quick 30 second break and then come back for the last game.